Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you why or why not you need a $500 graphics card. If I look over here on my moderator, moderator panel, Sorry's Moncraft Kovia, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but he asked, uh, he's a four, I'm not sure what language it is, but he asked, what I'm interpreting this is, is it worth buying a $500 graphics card over a 9800 GT, which is obviously much cheaper, you can get those used on eBay for like $50 now, something like that. But versus a new $500 graphics card like a GTX 580, what's the difference in like would it help you to get the 500 or would it be better just to get a 9800 GT? Well, first of all, it depends what games you're gonna play. Um, if you want to play every game out right now, max settings every game for a few years to come, max settings then maybe you want that GTX 580 for $500 but you're paying the price for it otherwise for me I'm saving up I'm gonna get a GTX 560 I'm hoping this year which is uh, I'm not quite sure off the top of my head 20% slower than a GTX 580 but uh, the GTX 560 is in pop park of between 200 and 240 dollars depending on what version you get and a GTX 580 you might find on sale 480 but usually that thing standard price is 500 but you're if you got two 560s and put those in SLI in your computer if you're capable motherboard you would have much better performance than a GTX 580 and in the event of many games it's only for the GTX 560, if you're playing at a resolution which is normally 24 inch resolution, 24 inch monitor of 1920 by 1200, it's a normal resolution for that size monitor. Um, you can max every game out except for probably Crisis, Crisis 2. You should be able to max GTA 4. Uh, um, well, actually, you might be able to max Crisis and Crisis 2 if I take that back. But you have a lower frame rate, it might not be acceptable for everyone. But uh, it just your personal preference when you want. If you think 30 FPS is playable or 60 FPS is what you really want. But with a GTX 560 Ti, there are very few games you can't max for just $200 versus the 580. If you were getting a 580, usually. You have triple monitors, you have greedy or some, something high end feature like that, but if you can already afford three 24 inch monitors or a greedy display, you probably have the money. So it doesn't really matter to you to, to just spin on a GTX 580, have the best performance now, and not worry about that you're paying like twice the amount of money, only getting about 20% more performance versus 200%. So you can just weigh your options that way versus or if you buy used like you're saying a 9800 GT you can get I guess $50 off eBay now that is less than half maybe a third maybe a little bit less than a th third performance of a GTX 560 but if you were to play or, or just the source engine games by Steam like Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life 2, those games it could still max those games uh, considering as long as you have a fast enough processor you can still max those games just fine if you want to play newer games like Crisis you're probably playing at medium settings with that card versus very high with a GTX 560 Ti and or if you were to buy two 9800 GTs in SLI that's probably not what you want it's about as fast as a GTX 460, which is I think about 10%, 15% slower than a GTX 560 Ti. And you're also talking about those can cost down to, uh, I've seen less than $100 on good sales, uh, usually around 120 right now with just regular. And you, those are actually, in turn, a better deal than the 560 Ti because if you put two 460s 
an SLI for say combined of two hundred and say two hundred and forty dollars combined for two four sixties, you're talking about a the performance of probably you could say a GTX five eighty would be equivalent to two GTX four sixties in SLI. Another way you can figure out what graphics card you need is to look up benchmarks for your computer. Similar specs, you gotta learn what process you have, and what look up minimum requirements, recommended requirements for the games you want to play, what settings if you don't care, and the cards out that you need to look at if they can play the game at higher settings. Obviously, you should be able to play on your computer at lower settings. If you have a lower resolution screen, the easier that game is gonna be able to play. For me, I have a 1600 by 1200 20 inch screen, which is, I think, about 10% um, faster or so than a 1920 by 1200 screen, which is a 24 inch standard. You usually get, sometimes you get 23, 27 inch models. But you just figure out your resolution, and there are tons of sites for game benchmarks out there. Uh, and and tech is I uh, like that. The, the tons and Tom's Hardware has a lot of benchmarks, and I, I'm gonna I will post a couple links to some bench, benchmarks places that you can look. They always up, keep up to date with the latest graphics cards as soon as they come out. And don't forget that when graphics drivers update, you also usually get a performance boost as well. So don't forget about that. It's in turn it's. Defining the graphics card you really want, say need, is a better answer to that. You really have to do some research on your own. You could, I mean, I could probably tell you if you just wanted to play Half Life games, you had one hundred and fifty dollars you wanted to spend by a GTX four hundred and sixty. That game, game, that graphics card will last you a very long time. If you were just wanted to play the Source games like Left 4 Dead two. Half-Life 2, that would max those games by any resolution, even the 30s resolution, but those monitors cost that $1,500, but I'm assuming if you have 1500 to spend on a monitor, you can buy a better graphics card, is what I'm assuming. And graphics cards, they uh, go under Moore's Law pretty good, if not even better, that every two years, they double in performance, so if you want to just keep up... You, Keep up to date with your graphics cards. You can, what you can do is a GTX 560 right now is the modern, is the about the right price point and it gets good performance. And any above that, well, you're getting much more money for less performance, uh, not as much more performance. You're paying a lot more for less performance. So uh, what you can do is you buy a 560 if that works for now, maxes all your games. And if say two years from now it doesn't, you could sell that 560. Maybe if you bought it for 240, you could probably sell it for at least 50 to 100 two years from then. And then you can go buy another, maybe it'll be a 760 out in two years, and it'd be twice as fast as that 560, meaning you'll have money to put forward to a 760. And that just keep on upgrading with the mid range cards versus the super high end. And if said if you bought a high end at the very beginning, Sorry about that, my memory card got full. Well, I was saying, if you buy a high-end card for 500 versus a medium card for, say, 250, then you that 250 you can save for two years later and just buy a mid-range card and sell the other one. You're actually making up. So I have $100. Say, if you sold that old one for $100, you still have $100. But all in the end, it's up to you how much you really want to spend. It's just always, it's not always the graphics card that matters in games is your processor also. If you have like a crappy dual core two point like two gigahertz CPU with a GTX five eighty, there's a huge bottleneck on your five eighty that, that your CPU is not giving you enough power. And you might instead of upgrading that five eighty a couple years from now, get a much faster CPU or instead actually instead of buying the five eighty in the first place and spend Two hundred dollars on a graphics card, and then another two hundred on a CPU. You'd be much better off. But overall, I I can't answer all your questions, but I hope this gives you some general sense of like, do you need a super high end graphics card or do you not need a 
it's too bright, and you can just buy a hundred dollar graphics card, and it will do everything you want. And as a side note, I would never buy a graphics card from a retail store if I were you. Uh, in box like Best Buy, um, Staples, any of those, because you are getting ripped off. I'm, I'm straight telling you that right there, because I've bought a 9500 GT off Newegg. Well, I didn't buy it actually. Take that back. I saw one on sale. After rebate, of course, it's like a twenty dollar rebate. It made it twenty dollars after that twenty dollar rebate, so it's forty dollars without rebate. I go in the Best Buy with my friend. Like a few days later, that same exact card. It's a different version of the card, but the same exact performance, ninety five hundred GT, a hundred and ten dollars. That's not even added in tax. You don't get any rebate. So you're talking about uh, what? 20 versus 126 times the price that that's just a that's a huge margin it's not always that much some it's usually always like twenty dollars more or something in store but then you also have to add tax and well unless I order things in UA and I don't have to pay tax here in North Carolina but I have Tiger Direct owns like CompUSA and stuff and their stores are in North Carolina so unfortunately for them I would have to pay tax I usually don't, because of that, buy much from Tiger Direct because of the tax issue. But I have bought a few things in. Tiger Direct and Newegg are both excellent companies to buy from on the internet, Amazon as well, and all the many other companies I've bought from on the internet. But I hope that helps you in your graphics card searching. And subscribe if you find this video helpful up above. Also, thumbs it up. And look forward for my next video.